In new details about a record drug bust on the southern border, federal agents seized more than six tons of methamphetamine in Eagle Pass, the largest meth seizure ever at a port of entry. Customs and Border Protection put the street value at nearly $120 million. The tractor trailers manifest that it was hauling a drying compound for newborn pigs, but a field operations officer flagged it for a second inspection. Third encounters in December, big drop in migrant crossings in January at the southern border. ABC 15 data analyst Garrett Archer looking to why as he takes us inside the numbers. We had just over 176,000 migrant encounters at the nation's southern border in January. That's according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. By itself, it's a high number, but a huge decline from the record set in December. A 41% drop, uh, but still high for January, a 12% uh, increase from last year, and the second highest January on record. The highest being uh, about 185,000 set back in the year 2000. So where is the drop coming? from. Well, it's all along the border, but mostly in Texas. Migrant encounters there were down by more than half in just this last month, about 70,000 total. Migrant encounters in our state, though, uh, reaching about 58,000, uh, a drop of 36% from there from that uh, from December. Uh, California down by about 21% uh, and New Mexico, always a small, a much smaller number there. They saw encounters drop by only 1%. Uh, looking at nationalities, uh, migrants hailing from Mexico, Mexico make up the largest group as usual, uh, and those encounters were down about 13%. Uh, huge drops, though, from South American countries, an 80% drop of Venezuelan migrants, uh, but the only nationality up from last January, Peruvians, Colombians, Hondurans, and Ecuadorian migrants, uh, those encounters are all declining by more than half. An almost equal drop by demographic, migrant encounters with families and single adults both fell by about 60,000. Unaccompanied minor encounters, they fell from about 8,500 to that 13,000 uh, on the month before. With a look inside the numbers, I'm Garrett Archer, ABC 15, Arizona. Um, and then, you know, just another issue that's on a lot of people's minds and affecting their communities is immigration, um, yeah. illegal immigration in this country. Uh, now. What does a Trump victory look like um, for illegal immigration? What, what kind of change do you think we can expect under Donald Trump that... that oh, he's going to shut it down. He's going to shut the border down. He's going to get everything back under control. Border agents will actually be able to do their jobs once again, as opposed to be essentially become, you know, uh, 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 process servers and, and paper pushers. They're going to actually secure our border. The drug cartels are going to lose billions of dollars because they're not going to be able to traffic people and fentanyl as, at, at that, as much into our country. Our cities will be able to take a breath and not just have an onslaught of illegal immigrants into the cities. Um, I believe, and I, believe, I know President Trump is going to do it, we got to send people home. You cannot stay. Look, you can throw a party in your house, but that doesn't mean people get to stay. You got to go home. So, you know, you, people got to go home. That's it. So we need to do all those things. President Trump coming back, that's what you're going to see. And for the life of me, we have to start talking about the true humanity of a secure southern border. Because right now, you have young girls who are being sold into sex slavery because of the terrible policy of Joe Biden and the Democrats. If you truly care about women, you want a secure border. Because what is happening now is putting more young women into jeopardy at the hands of the drug cartels and the radical policy of the Democrats. The issue of the border crisis in the U.S. is exploding with thousands of illegal immigrants pouring over the southern border each week. But perhaps you could ask what should Americans have expected after every single Democratic candidate supported decriminalizing border crossings? Raise your hand if you think it should be a civil offense rather than a crime to cross a border without documentation. <laughs> can we keep the hands up so we can see them? Uh... And yet Joe Biden now has the audacity to blame Donald Trump for this crisis. Every day between now and November, the American people are going to know that the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. It's time for Republicans in the Congress to show a little courage, to show a little spine. It's quite the take. Well, Hudson Institute senior fellow John Lee joins me now. Uh, welcome to the program, John. Look, this is emerging as a major, one of the leading issues in the presidential election. 
Well, I'd say it's one of the top two issues. It's this issue and it's cost of living. You know, you've got 250,000 people per month going through the border. Uh, that makes it a major political issue and it's a real problem for Joe Biden. What did you think of his response there? The Democrats now trying to blame the Republicans for this. Well, certainly a morally creative response, but Joe Biden really has to own this. Look, for all Donald Trump's faults, he did largely control the border. He put pressure on Mexico. Um, he had more patrols and he had tougher rules against uh, people who had made it into uh, American territory. Biden, like the Democrats, asked him to do, he dismantle some of that. And once the narrative gets out that America is a soft place, an easy place to go to, uh, we see what happens. Look, Australia has dealt with this, not at the same scale, but once that narrative and once the message gets out, it's very difficult to actually control it. So Biden has to own this.